Let's see. We'll do a quick multiple choice one here. Which of the following conditions would be most likely to cause deviation from ideal behavior in a gas? We have one low pressure, two low volume, third choice is low temperature, fourth choice is high temperature, and our, oops, can't have these random lines here. Oh, let me put temp there, and five, we have high pressure. Okay, so our choices are one only, two and three only, Let's see. Two, three, five, one and four, and final choice is five only. Okay, well, so which of the following conditions would be most likely to cause deviation from ideal behavior? So deviation from ideal behavior has to do with high pressure. High pressure or low temperature causes the volume to be small. So a small volume, a high pressure, low temperature. These things uh, tend to induce deviant behavior. So one only, low pressure. No, that's not it. B, two and three only. Well, low volume, yes, that will, that will do it. Low temperature, yes, low temperature will induce a low volume. That'll do it. Um, High temperature, no, but there's also high pressure. High pressure will also cause a low volume. So this says two and three only, but two and three and five also work. So it isn't B. We look at C, two, three, and five. Yes, that works. Let's check our others just, just to be on the safe side. One and four. One, no. Low pressure, four, high temperature, no. That's definitely not it. And five only, well, five works. High pressure, yes, that's certainly viable, but it's not that one only. It's also two and three, low volume, low temperature, high pressure. The idea is the low volume part. Low volume comes from high pressure. Low volume comes from low temperature. So that's what you have to keep in mind. So deviant behavior comes when you have low volumes. Okay, so that gives you a sampling of the type of problems that you're going to see on the AP exam. Some of them are from multiple choice section. Some of them are from the what they call the uh, uh, essay section, some from the free response section. This is pretty typical of the type of thing that's going on. They're not altogether difficult mathematically, it's just they require a qualitative understanding. It's very, very important that you know the chemistry. Being able to do the math is nice, but as you'll discover as we go on in the course, a lot of the mathematics tends to be very, very long. It's not a one or two step thing. If you understand the chemistry, the math will follow, but just being able to do the math doesn't mean that you'll be able to reason out the chemistry because the math can lead you astray. I mean, as you see, if you miss some of the units, you're going to be all over the place. Numbers are not going to make sense. Qualitative understanding is what we seek in science. Math will always be there. Qualitative understanding will not always be there. Okay, thank you for joining us here at educator.com. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.